Thank you so much for taking the time for this interview. My pleasure. Um, let's start with this. I think um, a lot of people that are listening, like I told you, they're entrepreneurs, business owners, people that are in this industry, either working for a company or for themselves. Uh, let's give them some context about you. What are you mm -hmm. doing? How do you end up here? I know it's a long story. Um, but kind of Today or my history? So the history, like how you got to where you are today. In like well, I was there. born in Romania. I left Romania when I was 18, went to Germany with my mother and my brother, um, studied medicine. Then I worked as a medical doctor for some years. And then 1995, I came back to Romania for doing something else, transportation, coach transportation between Germany and Romania. And then from that point, it means 23 years. Um, I developed a group of companies, 20 companies in Germany, Romania and Moldova, but mainly in Romania with 150 million euro turnover at this moment, 70, 700 people, uh, employees, mainly in tourism, not anymore in transportation. So we started with transportation uh, by coaches. We still have our coaches. We right. still are doing uh, that business. But um, we developed a tourism uh, industry and we, uh, since seven years, we have a franchise contract with the biggest tour operator in the world, which is TUI from Germany. And uh, it's a retail business, so we have we are the, 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 the biggest uh, retail uh, company in tourism in Romania with um, 80 branches. Right. Uh, we have also a tour operator, we are bringing people from outside, so we have an incoming company, we have uh, two hotels or resorts, so they're all around. one in Transylvania, one mm. in uh, Danube Delta, which are the, the best regions for tourism in Romania, so mainly uh, transportation and tourism. Right. Uh, sector. Is, uh, I, was, um, I was looking online, it said that less than 8% of your business now is now transportation yeah. and the rest is tourism. So like yes. the, what you started with. Not only tourism, we have, mm. for example, we have, a lot of uh, talking about America, accommodation, we are a franchise partner for enterprise rent a car. Mm. Okay, so we are Enterprise Romania, we are TUI Romania, we are working with Flixbus, Flixbus is the biggest uh, bus operator in, uh, in Europe and so on and so on. Right. So, how old are you right now? Uh, if I may ask. Too old. Right. But yeah, I, I, my 50, point is, you've, 54. you've been doing this for a long time, right? 23 what, years. And it's, you've stayed consistent, somewhat inside the same industry, like hospitality, transportation, yeah. travel. It's kind of in the same type of deal. Why would you say you got into this industry in the first place? Because it went for medicine. It's maybe not further, like, there's no other extreme, right? It was right? a pure coincidence. Right. Uh, and, or, I don't know if that word is the best, but it was by chance. It was somebody from Romania telling me I need a little bit of help and I tried to help and today like this, tomorrow like this, and the day after tomorrow like this, and after one year like this. I did it somehow parallel to, the, to my medicine job. Right. And one day it was uh, take it or leave it. And mm. uh, I took it. Came to Romania, a country with a lot of opportunities. In what, in what, what year did you came to Romania? 1995. So after the revolution, there were no communism anymore. After the Got revolution. It. So I went out of Romania in 1982 and I came back 1995 at the beginning half-half and then more and more. And then after 1997, 100% in Romania. Right. And okay. So we went in doing that, and now you're you're uh, you're obviously the CEO and the, the Euro Alliance Group, and, and doing 100 million, uh, 150 million in turnover, which is obviously <laughs> a huge enterprise. Um, what would you say? Let's talk a little about about that, and I want to kind of um, get back to the entrepreneurship role uh, in your life. Like you started in in medicine, and then yes. you went in doing uh, starting Euro Alliance and everything that you're doing. Wasn't that a big shift for you to go from such a traditional thing to like the most risky, perceived risky, especially in 95, where everybody, when everybody was just transitioning from... The, so, biggest, well, yeah. the, the biggest problem was not for me, but for my mother. Right. So she said, well, we are crazy. Um, Does she well, think I that now? It, I did it. Well, she's not uh, alive oh, I anymore. I understand. I understand. Um, 
but she was proud uh, after 10 years. But at the beginning, it was, wow, well, you, you are a medical doctor. It's like, wow. And then you will become a transport company. Well, this, is, this is not the best way for your life. And I, um, so she, she did a lot to take at us out of Romania in the communist time. And I went back to Romania. So for her, two big disappointments. First of all, she was very proud uh, that uh, her son is a medical doctor and she did a lot to take us out for, from Romania. So now something else and in Romania, it was not easy. Um, well, it, uh, if you ask me why I took the decision, I don't know. Mm. It was a feeling. Mm. It was a feeling that I can do something in my life that is different. Mm. Uh, I had the option to stay in Germany. Okay, my name in Germany, medical doctor. Okay, maybe... Fine. Um, it was nothing special. Nothing special. But to come back to Romania at that time, uh, with all the, let's say, the knowledge, the mentality, the mindset uh, from Germany, to do business with Germany, to take the model of Germany and to try to implement here in Romania what I've seen in Germany the whole time at that moment, I thought this is an opportunity. Right. And uh, not so many people are willing to do that. So I will be in a special situation in a special moment, let's try it. Mm. Okay, and I did it. I, I didn't know the new Romania, so I knew the old Romania in the communist time, but it was completely different. I didn't know the industry, transportation. I didn't know, I didn't know the legislation. I didn't know anything about entrepreneurship. I didn't mm. know anything about accountancy. I, so it was like, uh, like something new. And I've learned a lot, um, and I try to do things in a different way, based on trust, based on, um, uh, let's say, um, consistency. It's not like it works also like this and like this and like this. So I try to, to be very consistent in what I've... In what you deliver in, out. In what I delivered. Mm. And I came from medicine where the patient is in the, in the middle of all your, your focus, focus. Right. And we are in, the, uh, in services uh, where this should be the same, which was not the case in Romania at that time, because mm. uh, the entrepreneurs were focused on themselves. And on making money doing sporadically. Money, mm -hmm. Doing money. And I always tell, told uh, my people, Money is not uh, our target. Feedback, positive feedback from the customer is our target. Money will come. Right. It will not come tomorrow, but it will come. If we do things good, money will come. And this was different at that moment. At that this moment... This is 95. 95. Where everybody was well, buying real estate and trying to... Yeah. But if I compare with today, let's say, well, things changed a lot in Romania, but we still have this mindset. What's in it for me? Probably this is not a Romanian mindset. Uh, everywhere. It's human selfishness? Maybe? Yeah, probably. But in Romania, especially because the Romanians were... They, we came from nothing. And we wanted to have more and more and more and talking about money and uh, um, give up all, all our uh, concern about uh, do I have money for tomorrow to buy that, to buy that and so on. So, so it was different. It was the transition period mm. where people came out from nothing and trying to do things for themselves, to buy, to build a house, to have a car to make a holiday, to do that and to do that and that. I had it in the past. So for me, it was not the focus. The focus was the customer. Right. So I didn't took out money from the company all wow. those years. I didn't, I didn't, this year is the first year that I took some dividends. But so after 20 years, after the 20 first years, year you took dividends. After 23 wow, years. Wow, that's a big all thing. All the money remained in the company and we developed. Because I said, I said, well, I have a car, I have a house or an apartment. I, 
well, we are in the travel industry, so I travel so anyhow. You can go anywhere. Mm. Interesting. So, would you say that because I think that's very interesting? You said that you came into this in, into, into this kind of building this company without any experience, without entrepreneurship, without knowing people anything. Would you say that was ultimately an advantage? Now looking back, because you didn't play by the norm. Well, by the, well, it was on that. On of course, one, also, on one side, it was an advantage because right. thinking out of the box. It mm. was an advantage. On the other side, it was a big disadvantage because I didn't know anything. Financials. I didn't. I didn't understand why I need the HR department because I said, well, I talk with the people, so I right. know better uh, if I want to take him yes or not. So it, it was just feeling. Uh, I didn't understand exactly what I need an accountancy department because I said, well, I have the money in the account. Why? Why should I report to anybody? Because I don't steal money. Right. And didn't give a shit. I didn't have a legal department. I didn't, so I didn't have an audit. And when did that change? Like when, when you realized well, what, how changed, many employees did you like, changed, okay, this is not going to happen. It changed, uh, 2009. Wow. Yes. Uh, so after 13 years, whatever, you when really we became, tough. we became, we, we, uh, had the first problems. Mm the big crisis and so on and so on. Transportation was difficult. People from uh, Spain, from Italy and so on, they didn't travel uh, overnight so much. So we started to have some problems and uh, then I said, well, where is my cash? Where is that? Where is that? Mm. Where is the money from the market that we have to receive? So they didn't could pay the money. We didn't have guarantees and so on and so on. Then I took uh, for one year, two guys as consultants and they make a restructuring of the, the whole group and they bought for the first time an ERP. Wow. It was like we had the accountancy in a... Not on paper, I'm assuming. Well, not on paper at that time, <laughs> but in a very... Historical way. Okay. Historical system. So they invested 100,000. I, I wouldn't uh, uh, did that. You would never have done that. No. Yeah, that's interesting. But uh, they did. So they convinced me and they made a restructuring of the group and said, well, you have to read some books. Therefore, we have books here. Uh, you have to go to some courses. You have to understand you have you need an HR, you need the legal department and so on and so on. So, so what, what were these consultants? What was their name? I mean, if people want to get the same type of consultants, what the, was the job title? Not the company. I'm asking that. Okay. Well, one, uh, one was, uh, one came, he was a CFO, so CFO. Uh, from a mm. um, telecom company. Right. And the second was a vice director of a big bank. So and at that moment, they were both free, mm. whatever. And uh, well, I said, come to me and help. Because they knew bit. infrastructure. Mm. And uh, so somebody from a bank, somebody as a CFO. I was always good in sales and we were based in sales, mm. but not in uh, defense. Huh? So not in Offense. the, and in the su support uh, departments. And they try to do a lot of things. It, it, this cannot work overnight, but I understood that I'm not, I don't know everything. I understood that I have to trust more, uh, some guys from the support departments and so on and so on and to give them, give them, uh, freedom and not only, um, the freedom, but also the tools that they need, um, just to restructure the, the group. And that happens at that time. And after this, it was like, uh, a new life because until then from 1995 it was business 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 it was a, a wave mm. okay so another coach it was full another coach it was full another coach you know, he, he a branch he a branch they sold tickets and so on it was a lot of effort works right but it was not us it was the market mm. the market were, was growing and we just put, let's say, the tools on that. So, uh, but after that, when it came down, I understood that I don't know a lot of things because I'm a medical doctor. So uh, we started to to make the restructuring of the group. What would you say for you have been the two or three things that have helped you? like to go through that transition under things, things better. Have you learned financials? 
Have you learned well, uh, people management? Like, yeah. what would you, what changed you? I understood uh, the need of the support departments. Mm. And uh, this helped a lot. Mm. Um, I understood that uh, in, my, in my view, the focus was on the customer, but in the same time, I need to focus on my human resources. They can deliver I, that. I need happy human resources in order to put smiles on people's faces, what we think that we want to do. So it was not anymore the customer alone, but it was uh, the, the, let's say, the employees in the same time. Hmm. Uh, we understand that we need uh, them to develop, to send them to courses, to send them to personal development and so on and so on and so on. And we did a lot in that. Mm. We understood at that time that even if it is a crisis, we have to invest in marketing mm. and not to cut, cut cost, cut cost, cut cost, cut cost until there's nothing more, more, more to cut and you are dead. And the money that we still had into account, we invested mm. in people and in marketing. You're talking about like 2006, 2009, 10. Yeah, 2008, 2010, 2011, mm. it was the time. And after 2011, it was the push. We made a contract with TUI because we were, we, we were already in the tourism industry in all the branches, but under Eurolines and people said, oh, Eurolines is coach, this is it. Mm -hmm. And then we needed a brand for tourism. And then we uh, make this contract with TUI and number one in the world, easy to communicate on, on TUI. So we make a rebranding. <clears throat> we kept some Eurolines offices, but most of them are uh, TUI. We went into the shopping malls, it was not before, and we invested a lot in, in online. So we did what was needed to do in the touristical market and we came from zero to number one within six, six years. Wow, so I think that's really interesting. Um, if you would look, so going from there, it's like starting your business in 95, around 95, and then going towards like 2006, you learned about and made all these transitions in your company, then all the way to today, we're 2018 right now, um, you said that, okay, there's this inherent like natural thing in you that makes you focus on the customer, which comes from you being in the medical field, when you have a patient I'm from Germany, yeah. By the way, the German accent is fairly. It, you, I can hear that pretty well. Okay. Uh, what do you think would be like some stories or some lessons that you've learned applying that philosophy of taking care of customers? I mean, you, you look at Amazon and all these companies; they kind of say the same thing. What would be some stories in your company that illustrated how that really works and uh, what that does? Well, what I've learned is that before before having Happy customer, you need to have happy employees. Right. This is the first lesson that I've learned. Right. It doesn't work vice versa. Mm. So you have to take care about your people and to have happiness as your target in your, in your daily work, which is not easy because mm. being happy is different from guy to guy. So, but you need to do that. First of all, this first of all. Secondly, you need a, um, organizational culture it's a culture based on what can I do for you mm. internally and externally within our group so our people has they have to ask themselves when they come to the job what can I do for my colleague and every day doing something more what can I do for you that you say wow if you have this culture within your company, you will transmit the same to the customer. So it's smile and what can I do for you? It's not what is in it for me. It's what can I do for you? Mm. Um, and you have to be professional because smile is good, but just smiling, it's not enough. And you have to be profitable because if you're because not. if you are not profitable, you cannot invest in people. And mm. you have to invest in people in order to have the best people. Mm. And in order to develop the people that you have. So by investing in people, you mean 
having the funds to actually get the best people by paying the salaries well, and then get the best or get the young people and, and, and make a development mm. and make a progress with mm. them but you have to invest in courses you have to invest in info trips you have to you have to invest in people right and if you don't have the money you cannot invest in people so mm -hmm. and it first goes back. of all you need happy people then you have you will have happy customer but in the same time you have to be efficient and you have to be you, the processes uh, they have to be uh, automized and, and digitalized and so, and so on and so on and then you can have success which is not easy mm. but it's Doable. Because it's a competitive space. I mean, it's not like you're selling something that just nobody else has. It's, it's a competitive space. You need to be yeah. really good at what you do, right? I'm assuming. You have to offer added value. People have to understand that you offer something to them, that you are not a seller. Because they find uh, trips in internet. So why should they come to the travel agency? Why? Why do you think there's that? What would you say is the added value of coming to a travel agency, talking to a counselor and doing that. Because I, I know, for example, myself, yeah. I never have, I've never went into an agency to book a vacation. Always done it online. It's a lot of work. Yeah. Um, there is a lot of advantages. Right. So first of all is the time. Right. Okay. You need time to find in the internet the best, the best solution. Then right. on the other side, if you go to a travel agent and the, the consultant is good, uh, he has the experience, he has the tools, he has to work. You can go there and say, okay, I want to go to Turkey. I go in the shopping mall, I will come in one hour, find the best solution. Mm. In that time you can find your, your whatever you need, your Apple store. Okay, so you can spend some time in your Apple store. Mm. And then you come back and some, somebody who is professional and has tools, so reservation systems, uh, search and compare systems and so on, on, work for you. And then you will go there and say, okay, this is something that I found. Uh, first of all, security. If there is something in your destination, a war, uh, earthquake, uh, you have to come sooner back. You have, you have a problem and so on hmm. and so on. You have a contact person. You don't have a call me later. I'm not there. Call in ten minutes. Call in ten minutes. Right. No, you have a problem. You have a person, and you can call the person and say, "Well, I I have my flight tomorrow, but I want to come back today," and you will have some help. And then there is in Romania and in Europe there is a, a travel directive, mm -hmm. a travel package directive that you are insured if the company is getting insolvent. Right. Okay. So if you are not, uh, if you take companies from outside uh, Europe or whatever, you will not have this insurance. You will have some information about your visa. You will have some information about your health uh, problems that you will have probably in Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, you will have a consultancy and right. this is added value. And then you can take a look to some images that we can put on, on the screen. And you can see your hotel, and you can see your bed, and you can see your swimming pool. Yeah, so it's just more efficiency, a lot of more time, and it's the security aspect. Because you and guys you have a person that you can talk mm. with, and this is a specialist. And if you have a problem, you have somebody. Mm. Got it. So, um, talking about... Just right. Right. I'll, I'll tell I'll, me next time I'll, how I'll, it works. I'll do it. For me, it's just I, I never actually take vacations. It's just flights and then whatever hotel nearby so I can get done what well, I want. But this is a package. Right. right. I'll okay. try it. I'll give it a try and I'll let you know. Just um, give a chance to a travel agency. Find whatever you want to find and call a travel agency and ask, can you find something better? Right. Give them some work. Right. It is for it is, I'll, it is I'll give for it a nothing. try for you and, and let it you know how it goes. It is for nothing, but you will be surprised. Right. So... Um, that makes sense. And now that in, it really makes sense because all those people that are consulting the clients need to be happy themselves. Otherwise, the experience is not going to be Absolutely, good. Yes. That it's not worth it. Can you imagine some, somebody yeah. in front of you like this? It's not worth it. Uh, right? Thinking about uh, the salary and thinking about uh, problems? No, it right. doesn't work. It's tough. It's a tough thing to do because you have so many people that need to serve well and make, need to make well, them all happy. The culture. Right. So it must I, be some something as a culture in the company. Right. So what I was talking about was um, there are these programs that many business leaders runs. Uh, they're called uh, entrepreneurship uh, workshops. I think that's the translation. And um, 
I, I was not there, but my brother was, and he listened to you and everything, and I, that's uh, uh, how, I, how I decided to actually set this up and everything else. And what fascinated me, so he told me this story, and I think it's a pretty good one if you could tell it, um, that you decided to do a refund policy or something, or there was this lady, oh, I think this is the one, there was this lady that you had a lot of trouble with, and at the end you, you I don't, I don't want to tell the story, but if you know, if you can tell it, I think that would show the kind well, of the customer was, centricity. Well, it was um, in a point in my life. Right. Uh, I was in a seminar with um, Ron Kaufman. Right. Uh, he wrote a book, uh, Uplifting Service. Right. And I was there one, one day long, and for me it was like, wow, we have to change our way of of uh, serving mm. and especially when you did kind of a bullshit mm. and the people are not satisfied when you're wrong as a company when you are wrong got well, it yeah. mistakes or whatever it is. You, you did a mistake something happened mm. in that moment what you have to do is what we call bounce back it's a big opportunity at that moment to gain that person as your ambassador Mm. Not as your client, as your ambassador. You have an opportunity to make them think, wow, unbelievable, they did a mistake. Okay, everybody does. But the reaction on that mistake is not put on paper what is your, your claim. You will wait 30 days. Making it hard for them. Uh, making it hard. The best way to have no complaints, you know, the best way... To have making it really hard for the complaints yeah, to happen. Yeah, take out a telephone. Huh? You don't have a telephone, you cannot have a complaint. So right. You, so make it easy for the people. Uh, hear what they have to say and then react very quick and in a way that they don't expect. Mm -hmm. And the story is... it's. Uh, we had a lady in, uh, with uh, her child in Bulgaria, so we uh, offered a four-star hotel, and the hotel was booked, was overbooked. It was not our fault, it was the fault of the hotel. The hotel bring her in another hotel, three stars. So she spent the time uh, five days or seven days in Bulgaria and uh, in, in, in that condition, so it was not what she booked. But she was there five, uh, five days or seven days. She came back and she said, okay, I want my, my, I want my money back. And my guy said, oh, so, so, sorry for that, but... Uh, can I give your money back? Okay, we cannot give the money back, but we can give a difference. It's a difference like we give you a voucher for 100 euros, so don't expect big amounts. So the whole amount was 500 euros. So we give you a voucher for 100, 100 euros. And she replied and said, well, Forget about this, I want my money back. And then my guy said, okay, we give you 100 euro and a voucher of 100 uh, voucher. But it was not our fault. It was the fault of the hotel and the hotel says you were there, so nothing. Uh, and she replied, forget about this. Okay, and then uh, uh, in that moment we started to have problems with our coaches in a town in Romania when the coaches uh, came through each day in, in in, uh, in that city, control, 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 control. On all your buses and everything. All, all the buses of us. Wow. Uh, so they started to find a lot of problems with the drivers, with the passengers. So every day was a control. Okay. So it couldn't be, it has to be, it well, couldn't be well, random. Well, we, we didn't know what happens. Huh? It, it, we didn't know what happens. And then uh, uh, she brought us to the court. And then uh, we found out that she was an employee of that court in that town. She worked in, in that court. Wow. So we asked to move the, the case into another city. Right. And we sent the lawyers for the first uh, meeting, meeting or whatever it is, yeah. And we paid for the lawyers 300 euros or 400 euros. Then we sent the lawyers for the, for the first time and then we paid 500 euros and we... we uh, changed the the city and it was even much far away and we sent a lawyer for the 600 euros for the and so on and so on and then we found out that her husband 
was the chief of the control unit of the for the uh, for the region. transportation uh, ministry <laughs> and he stopped every coach and he found not he maybe i don't know right and then i went to ron kaufman at in this period so you knew because, about the problem and you went there because at the, i i forget to say when my guys didn't reach an agreement with her i tried to do it by myself Mm. So I took the telephone and said, lady, it was like this, sorry for this, uh, it was not us, but doesn't matter, you pay to us, we have to assume that. My colleagues gave you a voucher and 100 euros, even if the hotel said 50 euros, so you give you more. I call you because I want to have an agreement. You receive 100 euro more. And he said, Something like a swear word. Okay. And then hang it on the phone. I need the whole money. And then I said, Duke, okay, you need the whole money. Let's go to court. Because I, I was pretty sure that she will not receive the whole money. The but I was month. somehow upset. And, I, and then I went to Ron Kaufman. I said, bounce back. And then I came back to my company. The next day I said, give me the telephone number of this lady. Okay. And I, I called her and I said, look. I changed my mind. You are right. You get the whole money back. Because we messed up with your holiday. You were expecting four stars. You got three stars. You didn't get what you expected. Mm. And you are right. I would be the same, the way. same way upset. And I will tell my travel agency, I want my money back. You are right, you get the money back. And on top, you get a voucher for 100 euro for your next trip. And she said, are you, are you kidding? No, I'm not kidding. You will get it. No, I don't believe it. Well, I send you the documents and we stop the process. Well, if you do like this, we stop the process. Okay. So I sent all the documents, we stopped the process. And she became an ambassador, the whole city bought from us. She went to everybody because she has some influence through herself and, and her husband. And it, it was like whew, the, the branch in, in that city went up to hell. So we gave 500 euros back. It is less than we spent for the lawyers. Right. Okay. She became, a, she became an ambassador and we, she, she brought us not only her family, Again and again and again and again and again, but a lot of other, a, a lot of new customers. And this was the wow effect. She said, wow, they are crazy. And then husband, you know what happened? What? They give me my money back and not only that, on top. Well, are you really, are you serious? Yes. And then telephone. You know, and then they, they met with other families. It's a good story to tell. Let's, yeah. let's tell me what happened. What? Oh, my travel agency did that. Which is your travel agency? This. Oh, we want to go there. So this is another way to think. Right. Which is not necessarily everywhere in Romania. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. So, okay, five minutes and one. Yeah. Cool. Um, Okay, so what, what, what do you think happens in, in behind of that? You would say that the, the core philosophy of this is just, and I think what you did afterwards, I, I, if I know the story correctly, was you changed the policy in yeah, yeah. everywhere. Yeah, we changed the, the policy. Thing. We gave money to the front office to wow. react on top. Uh, to Nobody react, was doing that. To react on spot. To react on spot. Because until then it was... You want to have a claim, put it on paper, give it to, to us. We have 30 days, like in a contract, we'll give you an answer. And the answer was, in the best case, you get a voucher for whatever. So we said, okay, guys, react on spot. If you think that they are right. So if they think, no approval. No, no, no us. If they think, the, the front the, the, the customers. Front office, wow, cool. If they think that the customer is right, don't ask for proofs or whatever. Say, okay, I will put it down. I will put it down for you. Okay. I will give it to my headquarter. 
will try to find out what happened with the hotel or whatever, because in 99% we are not guilty. The providers are. But they some, see you as guilty. But they see us as, as guilty. And we, we have to assume that. Mm. And this is a voucher of 100 euros. It's just, I don't know the, the, let's say, what will happen with your claim, but you are right. And sorry for spending your time in front of me and for this we give you a voucher for 100 euros. Right. Okay. So we gave a budget for everything and everybody told us, me, well, they will spend the budget within one month. Mm. But they didn't. So they spend the, they spend the 70, 80% of the budget. Let's say they spend whatever, uh, no, you don't have 40,000 yeah. euros. Mm -hmm. They spend 40,000 euros just for that sign. And what happened? Mm. All those customers came back and bought in the first year for 400,000 euros. So you're, okay, so you're saying that you gave 40,000 euros back to those people that had claims? It just, just as a sign, because normally, then we see about the claim and normally we give more and we discuss with the hotel. But just as a, we, mm -hmm. fight, we fight for our customer with the suppliers and we give the money back that it is written in the contract. But before you do that, you give them a sign of kindness and like, okay, we got your back and yeah. we know what you, okay. Sorry for spending your time with that bullshit sorry for that right and in that in the first year oh because you it can will, track this actually. they will count they they came back with that voucher but they bought from more because, because they said look this this way to handle wow the claim is unusual wow and if you do that like that i know every time you will fight for me and you will you will uh, have me in your focus and they they came back just in the first year imagine but Imagine probably, the other probably people they that are, they about. They are, they are uh, clients uh, for a long time. And we don't need, how you say in Romania, it's client fidel. Uh, a, 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 I don't even know, a satisfied customer? Like a client that comes, over, comes back over and comes over again. Comes back and over again. Yeah. You don't need customers for coming back. Recurring it's customers. It's not enough. Right. You need ambassadors. You need ambassadors. Just coming back is not enough. You need ambassadors. You need people that they talk about you. Mm. Just, just coming back is not enough. Right. So our aim is to have ambassadors. Mm. Because they take your flag and they put your flag in other, in, other, in other spaces. So if you are acting like that, at least in Romania, you will have success. I think it's everywhere though, because you look at, uh, I'm sure you're aware of this. By the way, this is wonderful. I think it's so interesting. Um, you look at people like, I mean, this is obviously a great example, like Jeff Bezos, Bezos and what he does with Amazon. He has the saying of like, invest in the things that won't change. And one of the things that won't change in the future is the fact that people will want better and better customer service and better and better uh, prices and delivery. And, and so the things that won't change in your business are these that you're talking about. So. I think it's everywhere and just um so you have to change the processes you have to you have to have a good product but the first thing that you need to have is a good relationship with the customer mm. through via internet or via uh, offline doesn't matter but this relationship will bring your success mm. if it is just the product buying or that and go back and so on they will every time they will find another better price because you're a commodity right in that case yeah. you're just a transaction yeah. hmm. so final question then i'll let you go this is pretty late for you so um what would you think um would what would you think that the travel uh industry would be looking like in the next i'm not, not even say 10 years but let's just look three years down the line do you think there will be artificial intelligence that will give you the exact trip that you need? Do you, like, what do you see in the future happening in your industry that you think it's important? That was just an example. I don't know if it makes sense. Well, uh, people will uh, look more and more for experiences. Mm. We are not selling travel anymore. We are selling experiences. Right. So first of all, the product must be an experience. Right. Well, experience... Uh, means also the way how you can buy. So the customer experience of the, the buying. Experience. So mm -hmm. 
the product where you you buy something then you have a product but the first of all it should be an experience but experience start with the buying process mm. this also should be an experience i can imagine travel agencies just in big city malls or uh, whatever shopping centers uh, with a cinema inside, so where the people can relax, can take a drink, and can, they can see the destination, and they have one, two, three destinations. And like that, VR or? For example. Oh, for example, understand. Mm. For example. Or in internet, more or less the same, and so on and so on. Um, and in the hotels probably it will be a lot of technology so just making your check-in with your telephone and open your door with your telephone and open the lights with your telephone and open everything the the television hmm. with the telephone no keys anymore not that not that and that so technology um, people will look for that because they right. start to, to understand how easy it is. Right. So you essentially, let me know if you're saying this, like reducing, you're trying to reduce the friction between like how they get into the building, how they buy, reduce the friction. It must be simple, mm. easy. Right. Because easy. Then, then more people will do it. Yeah. Mm. It, it must be easy. So, but at the end of the day, what I, what I cannot think that it would be the future is that you go into your restaurant and you get a... A paper with the menu. Not a paper. Forget about the paper. This is something that I cannot imagine. Uh, you get a, what it happens today in some restaurants. You get a laptop or whatever or your tablet and you say this, 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 this and this goes to the chef and uh, it is coming through a robot and put on the table. This is something that I cannot imagine because mm. I think that the people are looking for interaction with other people. So... Uh, Technology, yes, in the room for the check-in, for the check-out, for the payments, and so on and so on. But the people will need interaction with other people. Because we're humans, right? Yes. And ultimately and that's... And when mm. you make a holiday, then you even need more interaction in a simple way. Because it's But personal. it will be like this. This is my, my opinion. Travel agencies, well, it will be a tough life. Mm. And they will, they must add value, mm. not like a seller's, but added value. But travel agencies will stay on place, they will not disappear. Um, and more and more it will be an experience in a simple way, in a technologized way, and so on and so on. You ask me about the future. This is that what I can imagine today. But I'm not so. I'm not a genius. So probably other people can imagine today how it would be in ten years. I, I, I'm. I, I found, and I'm going to end with this, that most people. Um, so I'm, I'm wondering about the future, but it's mostly just guesses. You never know. You, the, the, the job of a business owner, from what I've, I've seen, is just reacting to the present really well. Well, uh, and there the, are a lot of di disruptive businesses. Are people uh, changing industries in a right in a dramatical way. Right. Yeah, we are talking about Uber, we are talking about sure. uh, Airbnb, Airbnb and all these ones. We are talking mm. about a lot of things, okay, which are disruptive. Right. Uh, well, I'm not so clever. Uh, I, and that's in your management see, style, right? I see a, a better way of doing things than today. But, but my style was to take models from better countries, for, not from, from advanced countries like Germany and to implement that in Romania and not to rediscover the wheel and the right and, the and also that shows in your management style because you have a lot of from what I've seen of our research you have a lot of people that you have really smart people put in place you don't well, spend all this time bothering them micromanaging them you're well, letting I spend them be. just 20 percent of my time in that company because 80 percent I'm involved in projects wow in social projects entrepreneurship projects and mm. so on and so on so uh, I'm the I'm the president of the German Romanian Chamber of Commerce. I'm a vice president of the Romanian National uh, Association for Travel Agencies, and so on and so on. So we are engaged in bringing back uh, diaspora to Romania and convince them that uh, Romania has a future and it's a uh, country of a uh, lot of opportunities, which is the case. 
I'm involved in trying to come to become to to receive more, uh, let's say, tourists to Romania because Romania is really a wonderful country, uh, but we have a bad image. Uh, but the reality, it's much better than the image. Right. Uh, so uh, I'm uh, involved in educational uh, programs for young people who are going to the schools, talking about uh, entrepreneurship. I'm involved in a project with teachers trying to change the mindset. That's a lot of projects. That seems like... So, I, 80% of my time wow. is that. Uh, the rest are the managers here. They are doing a good job. They have to continue that. And this is it. So, and I'll, uh, I'll actually went with this. I just said this three times. If people want to reach you or get involved in some of the things you mentioned, where can people reach you? On LinkedIn? I mean, we'll have links for everything. Uh, so LinkedIn, Dragos Anastasiu, on Facebook. Got it. Uh, two pages on Facebook. Your personal uh, and private, and, uh, yeah. Dragos point Anastasiu at uh, Eurolines.ro. Got it. It's easy to reach me. Right. It's not so complicated. Okay. If thank you, you know so, my name. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. For, really appreciate it. So, thank you very much. Um, I think everybody enjoyed it, so thank you so much.